the middle of World War II, an American fighter plane fell out of the sky without even being shot at. That aircraft was the Lockheed P-38 plane, one of the fastest and most agile of its time. And it was designed by a Michigan alum, Clarence Kelly Johnson, one of the world's top aircraft designers. The P-38 was actually a great plane, but these higher speeds brought new aerodynamic challenges. When the P-38 entered a dive from a high altitude, a common flight maneuver for fighter planes, it would accelerate to a speed so fast that its elevators would effectively lock into place, making it impossible for the pilot to recover. Many pilots died as a result. This loss of control was attributed to the onset of what were called compressibility effects. This new phrase was plastered all over popular magazines, flight manuals, industry research papers, and even classified documents. But what was really going on? The problem had to do with the shape of a plane's wing, or airfoil, and the speed of sound. You see, the wing of an airplane is designed to generate lift, and the resulting shape causes air to accelerate over the wing. This means that the air flowing over the wing will be traveling faster than the plane itself. When this air hits the speed of sound, or Mach 1, big things happen. And for the P-38, this would occur in a dive when the plane hit an overall speed of about Mach 0.68, or what's known as its critical Mach. First, a shockwave would form above the wing and sometimes below, and cause it to stall, because the drag would increase and the lift would decrease. It would also disrupt the airflow behind the wing. And with the P-38, this disruption actually increased the lift of the tail, which is what caused the nose of the plane to pitch further and further down. The only way for the pilot to recover was to be patient. As the P-38 entered lower, denser air, where the speed of sound is higher, the negative effects would wear off and the pilot could pull up, assuming he had enough altitude left to work with. Johnson eventually limited these effects on the P-38 by adding die flaps to the underside of the wings. These flaps, designed by John Stack, helped the wings maintain lift and stabilize the downstream airflow for the pilot to keep control. The P-38 went on to be incredibly important for the Allied war effort, but it was clear to Johnson that a new generation of aircraft was needed. Enter the jet age. Johnson's next plane was a jet fighter for two reasons. First, the jet engine was a brand new technology that promised higher top speeds and faster acceleration compared to the propeller. And second, the Germans already had one. But the higher speeds from a jet engine meant that the P-38's aerodynamic problems were now more important than ever. After the initial designs of the P-38, federal research was conducted by Stack and others into ways to improve wing design that would increase a plane's critical Mach, allowing a plane to fly faster before it experienced problems. And decreasing the thickness of the airfoil would allow for increased stability at high speeds. Johnson implemented one of these airfoils for his new jet fighter, the P-80 Shooting Star, giving it a critical Mach of 0.8. And once approved by the U.S. military, the P-80 became the first operational American jet fighter and an influential plane for the war to follow in Korea. Further innovations in wing design helped to eventually mitigate the effects of shockwaves. And the continual improvement in jet engine design allowed for speeds more than triple that of the P-80. Like Johnson's final contribution to aircraft design, the SR-71 Blackbird, which is still the fastest and coolest looking air-breathing manned aircraft to date. Way to go, Kelly. 